Not many men have stared Islamic radicalism in its hairy, smelly, and altogether unpleasant face. Even fewer have done so and survived. One man who has is Theo Padnos. He's a freelance journalist who was abducted in 2012 by al-Nusra, an al-Qaeda-linked group in Syria that is fighting the Assad regime. After two years of torment and multiple failed escape attempts, he was finally released in late 2014. He's able to tell his incredible story to the world. Theo Padnos joins us now from Paris. Theo, thanks a lot for coming on. Thank you for having me. So I've always wondered, your, yours is a remarkable story, and I, the first moment I read it, my first thought was two years is such a long time to be in captivity. Did you find yourself identifying with the beliefs of your captors? No, not identifying. I mean, I'm try, I try to understand them. I mean, yes. they have a, um, there's, a, a, there's an elaborate philosophy that they're following. There's all kinds of libraries of information and texts. And, of course, I tried to understand what they were thinking and what they were reading, and um, but identifying, no, I mean, I'm not, I, they're, they're murdering people in the street, yes. they uh, employ children as torturers, they are um, destroying the society over there. No, I, I didn't identify with them. In, in well, how did you keep oh, from I, I doing that? Them for this. Well, good for you. How did you keep from doing that? You I, read so many accounts of people who, their defenses break down after a while, but yours didn't. How? I mean, listen, what they're trying to do is they're trying to make you um, like them. In that respect, yes, they want you to um, support their cause. They want you to, um, to uh, love and, and respect them as individuals. And because I knew what they were doing, I knew what they had done to me, and I knew what they were doing to my fellow prisoners. There was, you know, there was no um, conceivable likelihood that I could uh, respect or admire them for what they were doing. Of course not. What were they driven by? Uh, what are they driven by? This is a good question. I mean, some of them are interested in money. Some of them are interested in power. Some of them love the guns. You know, they're having a wonderful time during the jihad. This is an important aspect of the jihad that we don't really understand or appreciate in the West. But uh, they all have guns. They have uh, the keys to these cool pickup trucks. They have um, free food. They can... Uh, summon people off the street and begin to, you know, they, they imprison people. They're constructing a, a, a real prison archipelago over there for their prisoners and for anyone they really don't like. So, um, yeah, they, an incredible access of power to many young men who have had none over, um, you know, for, for most of their lives. So this is a, it's a dangerous scenario that's unfolding over there in those parts of Syria that the government does not control. Huh. What's your view of the Assad regime, whom they are fighting? I mean, the Assad regime right now, it is, there are approximately 16 million people there who are living in safety. The schools function, the universities function, the hospitals function. I mean, there's traffic police in the streets. Listen, it's not Switzerland. It's not a perfect society. I think they themselves recognize this. But uh, anybody who wants peace in Syria um, will acknowledge and respect the peace that they have at the moment and not try to, uh, not try to degrade it or damage it somehow, which, which uh, the Obama administration was doing by sending missiles and all kinds of weaponry to the rebels, which I thought was, you know, it was disgraceful because it, it you know, it um, destroyed the, such peace as there was. Huh. The, the peace that was secured by the Assad regime, which is, as you know, routinely denounced here as monstrous. Hold on. Uh, there is a, there was a situation, there remains a situation in which um, there are rebel enclaves, and these rebel enclaves are not peaceful. Of course not. No, they're being, they're being destroyed. And I mean, uh, it's a civil war. Look, it's a civil war. Yes. But the, the rebel enclaves are just a, a minority of the population lives there, and the majority of uh, Syrians are living in relative peace under the Assad regime. And yes, that is preferable to um, bombing and to the crucifixions in the streets that we're seeing, and to the murdering of citizens and the torturing and the imprisoning of random people, which is what they're doing. Yes. So we, we don't have a lot of time left, but just give us a short summation of how you got out when so many didn't. Um, this is a uh, this is a good question. Uh, there was a humanitarian intervention on the, that was really uh, carried out by the nation of Qatar. I don't think the American officials had much to do with it, but I have my freedom really uh, to thank. I have to thank uh, Qatar for my freedom. Amazing, Theo Padnos. It's quite a story. Thanks all for joining us tonight. Thank you.